It's mix and matching, fella. Sway in the morning, shade four five. Our next guest, I have to ask for forgiveness because when she walked in, I, I didn't realize that she was on the show maybe five or six years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I know who she is clearly, you know her entire story, and that's why, because she came on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, interesting story. This woman uh, is the uh, is the brainchild of former Manhattan madam. Uh, I mean bombshell. I mean bombshell is the brainchild of Manhattan madam Christian Davis, who's here. Uh, if you don't remember, Christian Davis uh, was linked to a lot of different celebrities and politicians that um, used her service. Uh, Elliot Spitzer being one. It was reported, you know, um, that um, A. Rod and David Beckham, as well. Uh, and um, I can't name the other ones that were uh, uh, reported. Who, who are some of the other ones? Me either. I can't name you them can't either. Name them I just either. paid for discretion. Okay, there it is. All right. She actually uh, <laughs> she actually ran for governor of New York in 2010. In her campaign, she wanted to uh, a platform of legalizing prostitution, marijuana, and same-sex marriage, and firearm rights. Uh, 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 unfortunately, she didn't win. Um, did you get how many votes did you get? Twenty six or seven thousand. The point wasn't to win. It was just to protest the inequality in the government and the criminal justice system. OK. And then she's back today to talk about her new um, opening of her beauty bar, Bombshell Beauty Lab. That's um, next Friday, August 24th. Um, and that's here in New York City on East 111th Street. Please welcome back to the show, Kristen M. Davis. Hey. Yo. How you been, Kristen? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I spent 2015, 2016 in federal prison. Yeah. You know, so I've, I've come out and um, work in politics a bit, which you might have seen on the news. And uh-huh. then uh, I'm opening a nail art boutique and waxing salon in East Harlem. Okay. And you went to prison for, you were set up, right? It was a political, it was sort of a political hit, yeah. It was a political hit. And what was prison like for you? It was awful. Okay. I mean, federal prison, I was in a medium uh, institution, so it wasn't a a prison camp. It wasn't the roughest. No, it wasn't like Orange is the New Black. That's like, uh, (laughs) that's, that's like little kids game. I remember you talked about your relationship with Remy Ma and used to visit her in prison, right? I did. I used to see her every week in Bedford Hills for a long time until uh, until uh, my probation officer put the smack down on that and was like, you can't go up there n- anymore. Uh-huh. How, she understood that, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. She understood. We still wrote, but that was about the extent of our communication. And then she comes out and, you know, amazing success, which makes yeah. me incredibly happy. And then we're both on some sort of supervision. Uh-huh. So... Yeah, you both are still on, pa- still on papers. <laughs> I, I just got yeah. off paper. Woo-hoo! Uh, okay, Christian, like about Davis a month and a half ago. <laughs> All right, um, Robert Mueller is in the in the news a lot. He is. He's in the, the news <laughs> a lot, right, Mike Muse? Yes. Yes. He is. Yeah. So, Chris, we're very familiar with the, now the situation. For most of us who didn't know you prior to, we definitely know you now due to Roger Stone and the Mueller investigation. Just a series of questions that I have for you. One, just starting off, what was it like testifying for the grand jury in front of Mueller? I think, you know, that's a really uh, good question because I think most people don't understand how the grand jury works, right? So you're in a room with, I think there are 24 jurors and only the prosecutor. um, And he's able to lead at ask leading questions. He's able to frame things in a negative context. And there's nobody there to stop him. So it's very intimidating and it's very uh, disconcerting that he's able to say things in a certain manner. So that's one thing. Um, And I think they're kind of abusive of their power. A good example is um, I was notified on a Monday that I was getting a subpoena and they wanted me to come to DC on Friday. So they gave me four days notice. I was in California on vacation with my mom and my child. And um, my attorney tells them, look, you know, that's not reasonable. Four days is not reasonable to come clear across the country. She's on vacation. Um, they got mad that I spoke to a reporter and said that this was a witch hunt. And they said, well, we don't care what happens to her kid. We don't care if she can get there. We don't care how she gets there. If she can speak to the media, uh, she can figure out how to get to D.C. And so I think that that's a really good example of the way that the government in this case is able to levy their power against people and and skew things in a way that is conducive to their case and their cause. Um, 
So, uh, you know, and and there's no judge what also people need to understand. There's no judge for me to seek recourse with. The grand jury can demand you to do this and you have no uh, nobody to file a motion with, nothing. So you're just <laughs> screwed. Yeah. So they send you this subpoena and I'm like, how am I supposed to get back to D.C.? I'm on vacation. I'm losing all this money. I don't get to see my 73-year-old mother. I don't have overnight child care for my kid. And they're just like, we don't care. You said something bad about us and God forbid you say something bad about people in power and do what we say. Yeah. We talk about uh, the investigation a lot. So just to clarify for our citizens, that experience is unique because it's Robert Mueller and President Trump, but that's how grand juries work across the board. So I want to make sure the citizens aren't confused by right. that Right. Well, the special that. counsel has a certain level of power associated with special counsels. So there has been, uh, which they lost last week, a motion filed challenging the authority. Andrew Miller filed a motion in this case. Um, he's also been subpoenaed and he fought his subpoenaed. Um, so they've, they issued uh, a ruling last week which says that it, it got thrown out, but it was a very good case to bring that they don't have this sort of authority. And we shouldn't be in a country where people can sit behind closed doors and try people without allowing them to defend themselves. But a couple of questions, but just to clarify again, citizens, that the she speaking about uh, special investigation versus the grand jury. So you're talking about the scope of power of Correct. a special investigation, but citizens, you're not confused. This is generally a practice of a grand jury. Next, based upon the question that they were asking you, do you see where Robert Mueller is going in the head of his investigation in terms of what they're zeroing in on? Um, I think that they are legitimately uh, investigating Russian collusion, um, communications between WikiLeaks and administration, Trump administration, mm -hmm. Guccifer. Um, <clears throat> I think that's what they're genuinely looking at. Mm -hmm. And final question. Uh, no, this is good, Mike. Keep going. Oh, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've seen Robert Mueller. He has run an airtight ship. Um, and every time the special prosecution comes up with new indictments, they are serious. Uh, allegedly, they seem very fact-based. Uh, they follow the receipts, uh, especially with regards to Paul Manafort and all the tax fraud and evasion. There's lots of data, if you will. Based upon your Q&A, do you think some people in the Trump world should be concerned by what is happening right now and the types of questioning that he's asking. I think um, I think from where I stand, I don't have any knowledge of collusion and the people that I've dealt with um, in politics and worked for. I also don't believe they have any knowledge of collusion. Um, but I think the cause for concern is the way that the prosecutor asks his questions and trying to make a case against the larger picture about whether someone, for example, Paul Manafort is a very good example, right? You see him in the press and his spending habits and all these things, and they're trying to frame him as paint this picture of him as this evil person who could do all these evil things, right? But we don't really know that, right? We only know what we read or we're reading about this indictment and these charges and him spending 15000 on an ostrich jacket or something nonsense like that. But, um, you know, behind closed doors, they're using these things to paint a character image of him and also not um, allowing him the opportunity to clarify these things. Mm -hmm. And this is... Yes, how grand juries work. But a good example of this is Remy Ma, right? I'm cl I, I knew her case very well because I sat there in Rikers Island with her. Mm -hmm. And she was painted as this awful terror squad rapper against this like innocent little college student. But in reality, it was a struggle over a gun. Um, it went bad. And she never testified for herself mm -hmm. and clarified. And she's an amazing person. You know what? She helped me instrumentally in Rikers Island. I was such a uh, emotional mess in being in solitary and she was there and nobody saw that side of her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in all fairness, people should be able to defend themselves. And well, that being, holds true regardless. OK. Well, with that being said, Kristen, uh, we also are aware, too, that Paul Manafort's defense rested their case yesterday without bringing forward any witnesses. So in that moment, Paul Manafort and his defense counsel actually had the opportunity to set the record straight and also to to counter any evidence based upon the data that the special prosecution has collected to counter so that we in the public can see the transcripts of what was said in the court. And they chose not to and they chose to rest. 
But the, the follow-up question I have for you right now is yesterday we saw Omarosa really drop a bombshell mm. on yesterday regarding WikiLeaks. Um, as we all know, Roger Stone um, is part of that narrative and that conversation. As we also know, you're an associate of Roger Stone, too, as well at one point in time. I don't know if you still are right now currently or if you're in touch with him or not. And I'm sure that's what the special prosecution was asking you questions about. Do you think Roger should be concerned right now in terms of how they're narrowing in on him? I definitely do. Um, I mean, let's let me set the record straight. I'm not a Trump supporter. I supported Governor Gary Johnson in 2016. I'm a libertarian. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't judge my friends for their political views, even though they're different from mine. Mm -hmm. Um, Roger Stone is a a very close friend. Both him and his wife are my child's godparents. Um, You know, so I'm obviously loyal as their friend. Um, I've worked with him off and on on numerous campaigns, not Trump's um, over the years. And, you know, I think that Obviously, he should be concerned. This is um, clearly targeting him. And, you know, he has an image as a dirty trickster. Get me Roger Stone is win at all costs and all of these things. But that's his public image. Again, Terror Squad rapper, Roger Uh Stone, dirty trickster. That's not who they are behind closed doors and even to their, you know, immediate circle of friends. So I think that, you know, sometimes your reputation doesn't do you any good. And sometimes you're guilty on your reputation and then you're in a legal, you know, you're in a legal proceeding and you choose not to take the stand because it might damage you more than it helps you, just like Remy did. Or, you know, so it doesn't necessarily mean we've gotten to the truth. You know, with Paul Manafort, I mean, I don't know his case well enough. I don't know him. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. but you know, I mean, it's tax related stuff. It actually has not nothing to do with collusion. So the waste of taxpayer dollars just to make a point is you know, clearly annoying. Are you still in touch with Roger Stone? I am. I am. Tell him we said what's up. Why don't you have him on the show so he could speak? I <laughs> you want to do that, Mike Muse? I would love to, yeah. He's, Can you I, it he's, a, he's a brilliant guy. He's, he'll, he's, he'll, he'll come up and speak? Yeah, yeah. I think they hit you up before, but I'm just going to say you said no. That, wow. This is not true. <laughs> this is not true. <laughs> Uh, that that I'm being misrepresented in the public eye. She's painting wow. this picture right now. <laughs> That's right. You know yeah, that is baby, not who yeah. I am as a person. <laughs> Defend you yourself, know, Sway. I, I know. I know. I'm, I'm going to close my case yeah. right now. <laughs> you know, absolutely, he could come up here and talk to us. Uh, Kristen M. Davis is here. Uh, and, and she did come up here to talk politics, but, you know, that's what we do. Uh, yeah. And we, we're here to celebrate Bombshell Beauty Lab, uh, which is opening next Friday. Where is it going to be located again? It's at 245 East 111th, East Harlem, which is my area. And then you got a website that people could go on as well, right? Bombshellbeautylab.com. And you can also go on Instagram and, and hit me up, Manhattan Madam. Um, you can find find us through there also. Why, why should people come to Bombshell Beauty Lab? What are you offering that, uh, that is uh, it's unique? It's a super good glamorous like shishi boutique nail art mm-hmm. place so if you like nail art intricate stuff um, and there's not a lot of that in Manhattan you have to go to the Bronx or to yeah. other places that's where you go how do you have some experience in that field yeah absolutely I love it um when you said it's open come see us I'll yeah. hook you up you no, can come I'm in def- and we'll do some super awesome stuff no I'm definitely gonna come through what made you go in that direction though that's, that's what I was asking because it's very competitive you know it's a competitive it market um, but to your point it's not many in Harlem like that so right. what made there's you there's not many in Manhattan, Manhattan. you have to go true. to Soho or like Uptown yeah. is sort of yeah. overlooked mm-hmm. um, you know I've always really loved nails and when I went to prison I had some funky nails on and I, I kept them for as long as humanly possible before the prison made me take them off and just looking at them made me smile. So when I came out, I was like, I just got to do something less stressful. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no. Can't be getting myself into any more problems, but it seems like I continue <laughs> to make some news on stuff that's not related to me. Yeah, well, you know, uh, but that's going to help bring people to Bombshell Beauty Lab. <laughs> I like it. What else do you offer? You said nails? We do nails, waxing, and hair extensions. Waxing. Nice. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Tracy, we were talking about this earlier. A lot of men are starting to get uh, hair extensions and, and weaves and that sort of yeah. thing. Are you offering that service for men, too, or are you discriminating against uh, me? I did not know these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. You know what? I always just love hearing people make a case for prostitution. Can you let us know if you have evolved at all as far as legalized prostitution or if you stand the same and why? Um, I've evolved a little because I feel like, um, there should not be anyone telling a woman what to do with her body. So there shouldn't be people like me, um, who I I particularly ran a very pro women based business. Um, but 
I feel like nowadays you can't really trust people to do the ethical or the right thing and to support women's empowerment. So I kind of take a step back on that. Mm -hmm. But I still believe that women should be able to choose what to do with their bodies. And if they choose to go that route, um, they should have some uh, legal protection under the law. They shouldn't be... um, you know, victimized and too afraid to call the police. The woman uh, who was killed by the Craigslist murder, mm-hmm. Jalissa Brisman, she used to work for me. And I had mm-hmm. went on a round of uh. press back then, very upset because she took a wow. risk and was killed. And, you know, this guy was caught with numerous trophies from all his victims. Wow. And none of these girls reported him because they're all more afraid to go to the police to get arrested mm-hmm. than for stopping someone who escalated to murder. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I feel like they should have that right to go. And I feel like there also needs to be some equality in terms of like holding the guy accountable. Look, I was yeah. associated with Governor Spitzer. All he did was resign. And then he went to CNN or wherever, got his cable show for like $2 million. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there like in Rikers and solitary, forfeited all of my money. I mean, there has to be some level of accountability for mm-hmm. both parties. Christian M. Davis is yeah. here. We had uh, Steve Madden on the show recently, and he got convicted, you know, dealing with Jordan Belafort, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street. And I asked him about, like, what kind of struggles did he have going back into business? But he came from a legal business that he just got involved with right. money tied in with people who were doing uh, illegal things, whereas you were doing something that was deemed illegal, and then you had to come back, and now you're doing something that is legal and, like, straight uh, straight and narrow. So what kind of struggles did you or, or roadblocks did you have to go through? Well, you know, the thing is, I, I I don't know, and we haven't talked about this here, but I was senior vice president of a $2 billion hedge fund for 10 years. Get My it. background is finance. I worked for, when I was 18, like the guys from the Wolf of Wall Street. I was the trading <laughs> assistant getting abused. So now I see all these Me Too movement and all this stuff. And I was like, you know what I went through when I was 18 in that industry? Yeah. I was in a pantsuit, a minimizer bra, my hair pulled back, no polish yeah. on. Like, And they told me to do that. They gave me gift certificates to go shopping at conservative stores. Mm-hmm. Like, So my background is actually business and finance. And then I went, and, and sex is so... Um, intertwined in that industry. Um, How so? What do you mean? Like all those guys, as soon as they make money, they're at the strip clubs, they're using escort services, Uh they're like, hey, party, girls, blah, blah. And so ever since I was 18, that was sort of what I was used to. These guys made a lot of money. They're asking me to book them girls. So eventually when I kind of got frustrated in finance and I was like, I'm just going to open an agency. I know how much money is there. There's an opening in the market. I'm seeing people getting arrested. Never thought it would be me. Um, And uh, I opened my agency. So then after prison, obviously, uh, after my first arrest, I tried to go back into finance in 2008. And the, those doors were closed. Like, yeah. even I had no felony at that time. I'm interviewing at places. You can Google me. Uh-huh. Places are like, you're so overqualified. We want to hire you, but our HR department's not. But if I was a man, they probably would have yeah, hired they me. Hired they would have They would have thought I was yep. giving me the, the credit where credit is due, perhaps. Uh-huh. But because I'm a woman, they're like, oh, no, you know our secrets. You, we can't hire you. And uh, so then I sort of went into politics and then I went to prison again. Um, <laughs> Damn. Sheesh, that's you got right. you in this prison thing. <laughs> that's huh? right. I seem to can't. Well, you know. Yeah, uh, so, so that was sort of the political hit and took me out of the office I was running for at that time. And then um, coming back in, it's hard for somebody with a felony or even a misdemeanor at some, some stages. New yeah. York City is a no check the box city, so they can't mm-hmm. ask you on the application. Um, which I think is great, but I wish every city was like that. I have a lot of friends that I serve time with who are having a very hard time rehabilitating. And, you know, we're at at my place. I would love people who have records to come in looking for jobs. I'm going to give them jobs. I'll train them. Like, that's That's what I'm about. Kristen M. Davis, ladies and gentlemen. She's more than just a bombshell. (laughs) But you can check her out at Bombshell Beauty Lab. Make sure you go to bombshellbeautylab.com, and you can reach her on Twitter at Manhattan Madam. Good to see you.